According to the Viking poem, the Volsunga Saga, one ought not to fear death, for the hour of your doom is set, and none may escape it. For the Vikings, this was in part normative advice, for succumbing to fear could land you in the Norse underworld, or Helheim, where come the apocalypse of Ragnarok, you would be forced to wage war against the gods and heroes of Valhalla. However, it was also in part fatalistic, in the same sense as is expressed by the Italian proverb that once the game is over, the king and pawn end up in the same box, meaning that whatever we do in life, we all must meet with the same fate. But should that fate be feared? According to the ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus, the answer is no. He believed that fearing death is entirely irrational, for when we exist, death is not, and when death exists, we are not. A sentiment expressed on several of his followers' gravestones by the Latin phrase non sum non curo, I am not, I do not care. However, for most people, such aphorisms are but mere words and do little to ease our existential anxiety. But is there in fact a way of truly resolving one's fear of death? In the ancient Greek town of Eleusis, located roughly 20 kilometers from Athens, for 2,000 years there existed a secret religious ceremony which was attended by many of the ancient world's academics and elites, including the likes of Plato, Sophocles, and Aristotle, until, that is, it was closed down by the Christian church in the 4th century AD. Though initiates of Eleusis swore on pain of death or banishment never to speak of what took place at the ceremony, among the testimony of those who broke their vow of secrecy was the extraordinary claim that those who attended the ceremony remarkably lost their fear of death. But what exactly took place at this mysterious ceremony to make light man's mortal burden? We know from Aristotle that it was an experience rather than something learned. And from Plato, we know that initiates would see phantasmata, or ghostly apparitions. We also know that upon entering the ceremony, initiates would drink a potion known as kaikion, which, according to the Greek poet Homer, consisted of barley, water, and a species of mint called penny royal. Given that barley is known for cultivating the fungus ergot, and that ergot is known to be rich in hallucinogenic alkaloids, such as ergotamine and lysergic acid, it is highly probable that what in fact was taking place at Eleusis was the ritualistic consumption of psychedelics. Interestingly, today, similar psychoactive fungal derivatives, such as psilocybin, the active compound in magic mushrooms, and LSD, are being investigated for their ability to dramatically reduce people's fear of death. Indeed, a study in 2016 found that high doses of psilocybin reduced depression and death anxiety in 80% of patients with life-threatening cancer. Moreover, two-thirds of patients reported it as one of the top five most meaningful experiences of their entire life. When patients were asked to report on their experience, they had this to say. I felt I'd experienced the feeling of an afterlife, like a preview almost, and I felt totally calm, totally relaxed, totally at peace. I have the sense that death is not the end, but part of a process, a way of moving into a different sphere, a different way of being. The Roman politician Cicero once wrote, Among the many excellent and indeed divine institutions which your Athens has brought forth and contributed to human life, none, in my opinion, is better than those mysteries. We have learned from them the beginnings of life and have gained the power not only to live happily, but also to die with a better hope. And perhaps now, science is on the verge of potentially rediscovering that long-forgotten Athenian gift. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.